So we're up to Genesis 13, 6 through 9. And it says, Now the lamb was not able to nourish and support them so they could dwell together, for their possessions were too great for them to live together. Remember why he has these possessions. He went into, he went into Egypt, and he got rich from the bride price. Okay? That's what happened last week. So, <coughs> so Abram's mistrust has caused them to have strife. Okay? And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. So Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife, I beg of you, between you and me, or between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are relatives. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself, I beg of you, from me. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right. If you choose the right hand, then I will go to the left. Now, have you ever thought about... We were just talking about it. Have you ever thought about what the world sees? You know, you're a Christian. Oh, really? Well, why do you have so much strife in your life? <laughs> you know, we war not against flesh and blood. We were just talking about it. And so, the devil makes sure... You know, with our governor, okay... <clears throat> I've got my opinion of what's going on with there. But the thing is, is that Clinton totally outright does a very bad thing. <laughs> I'll say that because children are present. Okay. Does a very, very bad thing. Does anybody jump on him? Everybody just goes, oh, well, that's whatever. You know, he's the president of the United States. And he does not get reprimanded for what he did. No, you know what? They almost turned it on her. Exactly. Girl, on her. Exactly. Friends, when a guy who is trying to follow the Lord makes a mistake, the enemy is like, whoom, on top of him, right? Left and right, he's getting accusations. And then all of a sudden, he's a hypocrite because he wouldn't take the money. He was trying to do the right thing. Okay. Well, see, that's like Alex. You know, she is. she belongs to the Lord. And that's why she's getting her honey bank right now because he you got two people one's a sinner and they've been a sinner since birth okay and you got another one who who is a, is is a born again child of god but they're in the same location at, at the bar doing the drugs and all that stuff right okay this person who's born again they cannot enjoy their sin they cannot enjoy their sin they will not have any rest Okay. Whereas this person, they can just go off and do whatever they want to. Mm -hmm. You see? So that's the thing. That's why our governor was attacked is because he is a child of God and God allowed it. The Bible says that the judgment begins in the house of the Lord. It begins with, with the house of the Lord. He said, if my people, in First Chronicles, he says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their evil ways, and fast and seek my face, then I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal their land. I told the Lord, I said, and I was serious when I said I was not being religious or, or righteous, self-righteous or whatever, but I said, God, I said, the world is going to hell. Where do I stand for you to zap me with all your power <laughs> so that I can reach them? Okay? And he laughed. He said, Angie, the day that you got saved, you received all of me. You didn't receive part of me. You received all of my power. You received the evangelistic gift to go out there and win the world. You received it, right? I said, well, then what's, what's, what's wrong? Why am, why am I not winning these people to the Lord? There's too much of you in the way. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Mm -hmm. See, you got saved. But you have a spirit, a soul, and a body. Okay? Your spirit got saved. But your soul still has demons. It still has emotions and things that just tear at you. You know, thoughts and all this stuff, okay? And what has to happen is the spirit has to be stronger than the soul. See, whatever you feed is going to grow, okay? If you read your Bible and you talk to God and you pray and you pray for other people and you go to church and all that, your spirit... I mean, I am amazed at how Angie is just... She's blossom because she's growing her spirit. This can happen immediately, okay? Because what's happening is she's not feeding her soul anymore. When you feed your soul, you do things like gossip and and listening to your emotions and 
you know, thinking bad thoughts about people and watching television and bad things you shouldn't be watching and stuff like that. You're feeding your soul. But when you when you read your Bible and you spend time with God, your spirit man gets stronger and your flesh man gets weaker. And so what's happening is when you got born again, the spirit of God is in you. Jesus is in you. But there's too much of you in the way. So that's why John the Baptist said, I must decrease so that he can increase. That's what he was saying. So God showed me. He says, baby, you got all of my power, but you need to decrease so that I can increase. And so that's what's happening with born-again Christians is, is they are saved, okay? But there's too much of them in the way. There's too much emotions. There's too many things the devil has pulled. Remember when Jesus said, the devil is coming, but he has nothing in me. Well, the Lord showed me a word picture of that. It's like a meat hook, okay? When you've got anger and unforgiveness and hurt, okay, the devil comes to you and he goes, oh, i got something there. Mm. And he starts pulling at you and start messing with your mind. He starts making you think all those thoughts. And, and you're supposed to take every thought captive to be the beast of Christ and deleting those thoughts, okay? Immediately, delete. Hit the delete button. No more. And put the Word of God in you and flush that junk out, right? But see, he, he's got something on you. And that's why the, Jesus said, he said, the devil is coming and he has nothing in me. He had nothing. When he stuck his meat hooks in Jesus, he had nothing in him. Isn't that awesome? But see, that's what is making Christians look bad. Is stuff like this, like strife. The world was watching. Remember the ites? They were in the land of the Canaanites. The Canaanites are there. They're sinners, point blank, right? They don't know God. God hasn't, you know, they're not listening to God speak to them, right? But um, Abram and Lot, are supposed to be, you know, God's people, and yet they can't get along. His herdsmen can't get along. What does that say to the world? What, what does it say to the world when Christians can't get along? I mean, that's what I was trying to tell you about, about the, um, you know, my testimony. I couldn't leave the shop because God said, what would that do to your testimony? So you're forced to sit there and let God work on you and get all that junk out of you so that your skin's tough so that in the future when God puts someone else in front of you and it's even worse, they've got a demon in their mouth. <laughs> I mean, then you can handle it. See, that's God's way. So, so Abram, notice he doesn't blame Lot. He doesn't say, you're the fault and you just need to go on. Now, all that wealth that Lot got was Abram's wealth. And he shared it with him. He didn't, he didn't tell him to go away. He blessed him and he said, you choose. Okay, the land is all before you. You choose. The reason why he did that was because he already had the promise. Mm -hmm. He already needed the promise that was, God was going to be with him. He was going to take care of him. So he wanted him to have the best. He really did because he knew that God was going to be watching his back. So as Christians, Romans eleven fourteen says, as Christians we are to make the Jews jealous. Have we done that? Have we done that? I mean, the world is waiting for the true Christians to arise. The ones that that can that can have peace in the middle of the storm. The world's waiting for those Christians. That's what I am following. I am like, Lord, I want to be one of those Christians. I want to make the Jews jealous because the Jews are supposed to come. They, at any time right now, they could come to the Lord and be part of the bride of Christ. But once we're raptured, the Jews, every one of them, are going to be persecuted in tribulation. So right now, and I'm going to explain this tonight. I'm going to talk about amillennialism and stuff like that. But the Jews right now, all of them could come to Christ right now. They could. But we haven't made them jealous. See, the Jews, salvation belongs to the Jews and then to the Gentiles, it says. That's what the Bible says. God gave the, the, the Bible, the Torah, to the Jews so that they would minister to the Gentiles. But they didn't do it. They held it to themselves and they, they kept it for themselves. They didn't, they didn't spread. They, they made proselytes, but they didn't help anybody really. So God partially blinds them, like I've told you before, so that the Gentiles can be brought in. 